Hello, welcome to Hive Studios. My name is Lina Vaz, content editor at Hive. And with me in the studio, I have Bobby Trian Young, a woman in tech and female entrepreneur. She designed really stylish uh, accessories for women who work in the tech industry or the corporate world in general. Let's hear more about her business journey. Good afternoon, Bobby, and thank you so much for being with us today. How did you come up with Bobby London? Bobby London was actually inspired by my own corporate career. Um, I've been a woman in tech for the, over two decades now. And due to the nature of my job and my personal lifestyle, I travel a lot, always with my laptop. And I often have found um, that there was such a gap for stylish products tailored for women. I often would opt for all of those functional products that were designed for men, and that's when Bobby London was born. I waited a number of years for most of the designers to do something about that, and then I decided to actually address the problem myself um, and decided to put together a collection tailored for corporate women, um, women in business, um, women in law, women in finance, and of course, women in tech, um, with a collection that not only is durable, um, but actually looks stylish and is functional and makes us, of course, productive. 90% uh, of startups tend to fail because of misreading the market. Did you actually do market research on this? Um, I would say yes, because as a speaker it, um, within the actual industry to encourage the younger generation to choose a career in STEM, I often spoke to a lot of women who, um, and I got an opportunity to hear their journeys firsthand, um, and that definitely identified the gap. Of course, firsthand for the last 20 years, I know firsthand that there, uh, there, there was a huge gap. But it was just reaffirmed by speaking to a number of women um, directly who I shared the concept with. And to my surprise, it wasn't just women in tech. It opened up women in law sharing their experiences of how they also struggled with the similar um, scenarios, women in finance. Um, so I guess my focus groups formed my, my market research. And it was really kind of good to hear that uh, there's much of a wider audience there, not just a, a small subsec subsection that I was focusing on. But regarding women in tech in particular, mm -hmm. if we look now at the NFTs and the metaverse, that is still very much male dominated. Why do you think this is? Why are women so reluctant to work in the tech industry? I've got some theories on that. Um, it is definitely a male dominated industry. It takes a confident woman to um, actually pursue a career and come out successful at the other end. And these are some of the strategies I tend to share. Um, during my speaking events of what I do differently, um, how as a woman, in co woman of colour, a minority in my own industry, um, I've actually succeeded. And um, the things that I do differently, um, but mainly my theory really is around women definitely tend to take um, career breaks to start a family, for example. And then there's the gender bias comes in where women often get asked this at interviews do you have any intentions of starting a family? Which in itself, a male counterpart would not be asked that question. Um, so I think there's that bias that there's investment being made into a woman, for example, her career, but she's going to then move away. And you really wanted to build a woman-led team and you actually succeeded because 80% of your workforce uh, is actually made by women. Um, so how, why is this so important to you? Again, I think I really wanted to kind of empower women by creating a product designed for women, for women by women. Um, and also I thought with the journeys that I've heard firsthand where there's the gender bias, women are overlooked um, in their corporate careers of an application just because of their gender, they'll be overlooked. I wanted to be able to champion women and put them first and give them an opportunity to um, to, to, to bring their skill sets forward, to kind of em empower them to be able to kind of have that confidence. Everything that I talk about 
Um, usually the strategy is about building confidence. I wanted to definitely be able to create that space um, and allow women to kind of be the driving force. In terms of investment, if we look into venture capital, uh, for 1% given, uh, one P is for women-led uh, startups, while male-led startups have like 89P. So it's a massive difference. Was it difficult for you to find investment? At the moment, I'm self-funded, um, but there definitely has been challenges that I've heard firsthand um, because I've, I've already looked into the next steps and the stages when I will be ready for uh, seeking funding. And it's probably because most of the VCs, again, personal opinion, most of the VCs are probably run by men. Um, and naturally they will build that rapport. There is a great organization in Scotland um, that actually um, funds women-led projects um, and they do boot camps um, as well, which I did do one of theirs and it was brilliant to be able to see and meet so many angel investors that were women. Um, you and I met met on, on, on Lunch Club, so Lunch Club again was a, was a great platform to be able to meet um, investors and a very small subset now are starting to become, become women, so it's great to see that. But um, I'm yet to kind of seek and step into to, to that side of things, to seek funding. But that's something that you plan to do at some point? Yes, to scale and grow, um, I think it's, it's something I do need to kind of give, a, give a shot to. Um, looking back at when you first started to develop the business idea in 2018, uh, what did you learn? Is that something that you wish someone had told you from the start? Oh wow, it's been such an amazing journey. I've learned so much on so many different elements. Um, I don't think there's anything, any one thing you can say that I wish I'd known sooner. Um, partially because my own work ethic is definitely one of persistence, determination, keep going, um, starting before you're ready. Um, there's never the right time. To, to start a business or a startup. You'll never have the right amount of funding. You'll never have you know, a fully kind of formed idea. You need to start before you're ready. And when you start focusing on that concept that's passionate, that you're passionate about, things start moving very, very quickly. Um, so I would say definitely start before you're ready um, would be kind of my advice to anybody who's looking to kind of do this. Um, and also, it's not going to be a walk in the park. Uh, there's going to be a lot of blockers all the way through. Um, I, can, I, can, I can vouch for that firsthand. <laughs> um, be determined um, and very resilient. Bobby Landon has been shortlisted for a few awards. What's the best way of promoting a new business? Best way to promote a, your own brand and business would be social media awareness. Um, definitely get out there and market yourself. There's nobody better than yourself to promote your own brand and business and rave on about how great you are. So uh, definitely don't shy away from that. Um, when it comes to um, making that first award application, everybody asks themselves that, you know, am I ready? And absolutely, yes, you are. You've got yourself this far to be able to have launched some a startup from scratch, get products out there, have customers, and it's absolutely important, in my opinion, to share your journey. People buy into that journey, um, and awards are an amazing way to kind of get your message out there, gain credibility for your business. Some of the awards alumni that I've been part of have taken me to um, the House of Lords, Parliament um, contributing to, towards policy making. It's, it's, it's been really amazing to, to, to be able to have that credibility. And what about sourcing? Did you actually uh, attend trade shows to source manufacturers or was, was there a particular recommendation or how did you find them? Um, I attended a number of trade shows. Um, leather was um, one. Um, then I've got obviously the, the tech side of the, the, the business as well. There's so many kind of elements to, to my business, both with the leather being completely different and the tech being completely different. Um, one of my kind of 
um, one of the things that were important to me was to try and keep it British. Um, and you do get a Make It British show. Um, and I contacted the, um, the person that actually runs that show. Didn't really work out well for me. Um, but I think definitely from my um, shows, which were all tailored through for, for leather, I was able to actually speak to um, a vendor there who made a recommendation. Um, and I think through word of mouth, through, again, business networking, through speaking to people about what you're doing, what you're looking for, that is how I was able to kind of drive my suppliers, my contacts forward. And then you've got to do trial and error as well. Some things work, some things don't. And you brought some products today, but there are others that are not here. Do you want to talk us through your, your initial collection? A Absolutely, little bit? yes. Um, so what you see here is the laptop sleeve. Um, the laptop sleeve also um, doubles up as an elegant clutch, so you can transition from your day to evening look um, quite seamlessly. Um, then we've got right at the front, we've got an accessory holder, um, which I will demo, um, and a little keychain, um, which is designed to just snap on to your bag. And then you can easily find your keys, which in women's bags, it's so difficult to be able to find <laughs> anything in that, in that single pocket that we're given. Um, this one it has to be one of my favorite products. Um, as a frequent traveler and definitely as a, as, as a Londoner, it's, it's an absolute godsend. Again, Carabina allows you to be able to just hang that onto your bag or if you're traveling at an airport, it will go onto your luggage trolley. This opens up and you can actually wrap this around your jacket, coat. Uh, it's an adjustable strap, scarf and be hands free, uh, <laughs> especially in the tube um, where it can be kind of really, really warm. Um, these two products are actually uh, very, very new, hot off the, uh, the, the, the press. And what you've got here is a crossbody, um, which is actually slightly larger to be able to hold far more stuff. Uh, so you can get your phone, um, a large phone like mine, which is one of those dual screens. Um, you've got the width there to, to put your lip gloss or your lipstick in. There's ample kind of pockets in there for your wallets, uh, sorry, for, for your cards. And then you've got some zip pockets as well for those, those smalls. And just one last question. What is the most surprising thing about running a business? Is it as you expect it to be? And more. <laughs> uh, I think it's been uh, an amazing journey. Uh, I was surprised how much I enjoyed the journey. It gets difficult, but you know, there's that rewarding element at the end of it. Um, a lot of hard work, which I didn't doubt. Um, I think most people do. Um, it's the constant, um, you've got to constantly champion your brand and business to be able to make it a success. Um, I think um, that definitely does surprise you. You can't just get your brand out there and forget about it. It's just it's a constant journey. But uh, I think I've just really thoroughly enjoyed my, my journey through and, and, that, and that surprised me. <laughs> thank you so much for being with us uh, at Hive Studios and thank you for watching.